In Lesson 4.1, students will continue investigating the properties of objects and materials. You can show them a stone and a stick, and students, of course, will be able to predict that the stone sinks and the stick floats, but after showing them that, you can ask whether other objects made out of substances similar to stone, like brick or cement, will also sink, and students will probably say yes, because sinking is a characteristic property of those kinds of stone-like materials. You can also ask whether other objects made from wood would float, like popsicle sticks or wooden blocks, and students will probably say yes, because floating is a property of objects made from wood. Let's take a look. And students do an investigation by placing different objects in water and seeing whether they sink or float. So they'll check a popsicle stick and a pencil. They both float. A rubber eraser sinks. Here a crayon made out of wax sinks but a candle made out of wax floats. That's unusual. And a paper clip sinks. A penny sinks. And here a rubber band is at the surface. It actually should normally sink. It was held up by the surface tension of the water. So students write down whether the object sinks or floats. So you can have a discussion with students about which object sank, which floated, and what the characteristics are that cause that to happen. And you can show an animation which helps students understand that floating or sinking is a characteristic property of a material. Here, a metal block and a wooden block are placed on scales, and you see that the metal block is much heavier. And you can ask students whether they think the metal or the wood will sink or float, and the metal sinks. That seems to make sense. It was much heavier than the wood, but then we'll make the wood bigger. We'll take a larger wooden block that weighs 40 grams, exactly the same as the metal, and see if the wood sinks too. No, it doesn't. Even though they weigh the same, the wooden block floats and the metal block sinks. Now we'll make the wooden block even larger, so it weighs much more than the metal block. So maybe some students will think that it might sink, but the wooden block still floats. So it's not how heavy the wood is, it's the fact that it's wood makes it float. Floating is a characteristic property of wood. And you don't have to get into density with students in second grade, but wood is less dense than water, metal is more dense than water. And here, sort of the opposite idea is that a rubber eraser weighs more than the wax candle. You might think that the eraser will sink, and the candle will float. Let's see. And that's true. The heavier rubber eraser sinks, the lighter candle floats. But now, if we shrink the eraser so it's the same weight as the candle, you might think maybe the eraser will float this time, just like the candle. But no. Even though the eraser weighs less than it did before, it still sinks. Now, if we shrink the eraser even smaller, so that the candle is much heavier, you might think that the candle will sink and the eraser will float, but the eraser still sinks. It's a characteristic property of the rubber used in erasers that it sinks. Again, you don't need to talk about density with second graders, but the rubber eraser material is more dense than water, and wax is less dense. In the extend part of the lesson, you can show students that even liquids can sink or float in other liquids. In this case, you can show them whether oil or corn syrup sinks or floats in water. So you can color some water and pour it into a cup. You would do this in the front of the class so the students could see, they could gather around. You could ask students beforehand whether they think the oil will sink or float in the water. And then you can pour the oil in and students will see that it makes a layer on the surface of the water, that it floats on water. Then you can take some colored corn syrup and ask students what they think that'll do. And you can pour that in and it goes right through the oil and water. And it should form a layer on the bottom. So corn syrup sinks in oil and in water. And it makes a nice layered set of liquids. For NGSS Standard 2 PS11, 
plan and conduct an investigation to describe and classify different kinds of materials by their observable properties. Well, Lesson 4.1 supports that standard because students describe and classify different materials based on whether they sink or float. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, students conduct a simple investigation by putting different objects in water and seeing whether they sink or float, and then trying to come up with some way of categorizing the objects based on that property. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, that matter can be described and classified by its observable properties. In this case, students describe and classify objects based on whether they sink or float. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, events have causes that generate observable patterns. Well, in this case, the causes are that substances have these characteristic properties that cause them to either sink or float. And students do simple tests and see that objects made of the same materials tend to either float or sink in a similar way. So thanks for watching and listening, and good luck with the lesson.